When we go on to Virgo, uh, we have, we're looking at Uranus sitting up in the eighth house. If, do we have, by a show of hands, do we have a few Virgos in the audience? Okay. It's, I'm sorry. That's all I can say. I'm sorry. Because it's been a tough row here. The, the Uranus in the eighth house. Eighth house can sometimes represent a lot of financial things. Financial things that everyone can't openly talk about. That we don't want to blab. That we need things that need to be negotiated. Things that we're waiting. Okay, is, what's the IRS going to say? Did we get anything in the mail? Do we have hesitant to go to the inbox to find out what kind of response did I hear? Uh, how much am I going to owe on that? What is the bank going to say about this? Oh, that estate, how is that estate going to get settled? Uh, is my claim going to be accepted by the insurance company? You know, all those things that just you kind of in, in a balance, waiting for something to come, that's what the Virgos have been dealing with. 2009, it will be done in 2015. Again, I'm not promising that it's going to be worse the last two years. This is a, remember, this is an undulating energy. I know you've had some good news, but I know you've had some real slumps in this energy. So we talk about this idea of debt awareness. You're very much aware all of a sudden, people showing up and saying, you owe me this, or they owe this, but there's interest that has accrued. So loans, taxes, all these things are complicated areas. Yes, I've had a few people in Uranus at the 8th house, and their father paid off the mortgage of their house. Whoa, that, you know, that's, whoa, that's great, you know. And promptly he resigned his job, okay, and threw him into another kind of a tight squeeze because it didn't answer all the problems. It helped tremendously. But, you know, I mean, so even though you might read one chapter, one six-month period, you're like, oh, wow, that's really great. But then you would look and see the downside of that energy, and there's some challenge always hidden around the corner. So we're sorting things out, sorting things out in the financial arena, uh, eighth house, of course, goes back to that idea. Richard, we spoke, we picked on him right off the bat. He had Uranus in his eighth house. Uranus is coming around back into the eighth house. That gives us a clue, doesn't it? Richard, I'm really picking on you now. Because remember, I said it takes 84 years to go around. So not that Richard is 84, but the idea we can see about how old he is, the fact that Uranus is coming back into the house that it nearly sat at. So you, it helps to kind of check yourself on your logic sometimes to see if you're thinking right. But we have this whole thing about exploring sexuality. Eighth house rules that pretty much below the belt. Sex life, how what your limited system is doing, what your reproductive system is doing or not doing. So all of a sudden we have Uranus, Uranus technology, so all of a sudden we could be having things done with the prostate, we could be going to have laser treatments of some sort. These are all just natural things. The bottom line is this, when Uranus goes to the eighth house, you have to come clean. That is the bottom line of it all. So if you're trying to dance with the IRS, you're going to have to come clean at some point. If you're trying to dance with the, you know, the mortgage, you've got to come clean. So it's a tricky energy to be trying to withhold information because Remember, Uranus is an energy where it kind of comes at you from many fronts, and just when you think you've got that covered, you're open someplace else. Um, oh, I have to talk just briefly about Lance Armstrong. Lance Armstrong is a Virgo. I thought he was just a walking billboard for what he's been through. And we, we know none of us know in detail, right? But the rise of power, the fall of power. You know, being stripped of you know, had a metal, right? Had a lot of metal. Now doesn't have it. You know, it's here. It's gone. Uh, corporate sponsorships, all that stuff. Th these were his words, by the way, in his Oprah interview. He's like deeply flawed. Uh, I thought this was interesting. I put the uh, blue arrow up there at the top. He has Uranus in the 11. We haven't talked about that yet, but note of it. Uranus in the 11 is the one where you get exposed. I'm not saying that the individuals necessarily are doing all these things that are you know, uh, antisocial in general, but they know about it. They're drug into it. Other people have told them. They've made them accomplices on some level. So this is a very, it's classic that he would maybe have defied it, maybe as strongly as he did, as long as he did. Uh, for those astrologers sitting in the crowd, you might notice that transient Uranus in the outer wheel is opposing it, and that is always a big deal. Oh, when Uranus opposes Uranus, again, there's a, a, you have to wake up to the truth, so to speak. And so, okay, so he had, uh, came clean, right? He had to come clean at some point, even though he certainly had a, a battle at that point, a long battle.